peaceful vlogmas day three and my eye feels a little bit better today the swelling's starting to go down and i can open it a wee little bit but not a lot so yeah hope and cosmo and the christmas tree this is what I'm doing. My Advent devotion with is Anne Voskamp's The Greatest Gift. So, for Vlogmas Day 3, I'm going to read it. So, um, The woman saw that the tree was beautiful and its fruit looked delicious and she wanted the wisdom it would give her. Oh, today's reading is called Where Are You? So she took some of the fruit... Oh, wait, so she, it, the fruit looked delicious, and she wanted the wisdom it would give her. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. Then she gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it too. At that moment, their eyes were opened, and they suddenly felt shame at their nakedness, so they sewed fig leaves together to cover themselves. When the cool evening breezes were blowing, the man and his wife heard the Lord God walking about in the garden. So they hid from the Lord God among the trees. Then the Lord God called to the man, where are you? Genesis 3, 6 through 9. Okay. For all the wandering, this is the first question of the Old Testament. God coming to ask after you. Where are you? Where are you in your life? Where are you from me? To get where you want to go, the first question you always have to answer is, where am I? Our fall was, has always been, and always will be that we aren't satisfied in God and what he gives. We hunger for something more, something other. The only thing that will satisfy our hunger for more is to hunger for the one who comes down to Bethlehem, house of bread, the one who comes after us and offers himself as bread for our starved souls. And for all the wondering, this is the first question of the New Testament. When the wise men come asking, where is he? We only find out where we are when we find out where he is. We only find ourselves when we find him. We lost ourselves at one tree and only find ourselves at another. Wise men are only wise because they make their priority the seeking of Christ. All our moments, all our waking, all the globe is a looking glass to God and the wise keep seeking the presence of Christ in a thousand places because you only come to yourself when you come to him. And your God, he's coming now everywhere for you. In all humanity's religions, man reaches after God. But in all his relationships, God reaches for man. Reaches for you who have fallen and scraped your heart raw. For you who feel the shame of words that have snaked off your tongue and poisoned corners of your life. For you who keep trying to cover up pain with perfectionism. Three words come through the dense thicket of failure. Where are you? Your God refuses to give up on you. Your God looks for you when you're feeling lost, and your God seeks you out when you're down, and your God calls for you when you feel cast aside. He doesn't run down the rebel. He doesn't strike down the sinner. He doesn't flog the failure. Spurgeon writes that no matter what the day holds, how the season unfolds, God holds and unfolds. I am come to find you wherever you may be. I will look for you till the eyes of my pity see you. I will follow you till the hands of my mercy reach you, and I will still hold you to my heart. And that moment when your heart turns to his heart, already turned to you, the fall turns into a falling into his everlasting arms. So C.S. Lewis wrote, when the year dies in preparation for the birth of other seasons, not the same, on the same earth, then saving and calamity go together, make the Advent gospel, telling how the heart will break. Therefore, it was in Advent that the quiet began. Oh, come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant O come ye O come ye to Bethlehem come and behold him born the king of angels O come 
come let us adore him oh come let